What's up, everybody? Welcome to another brand new episode of Topic Thunder. Here from the Top 10 Show, I have deleted that 30-second rundown video, so I no longer click it on accident, damn it. So right after that mistake here, I made it to the show, so I apologize to anybody who was thrown off by that for a half a second. But we are back here. I am the outlaw, John Roca. And uh, I am Matt Nost. Um, that name's not retired. I guess you have an entire <laughs> channel built around that. But How dare you? How dare well, I mean, that, that persona. Name. The name? The persona is retired, is it not? The persona is retired in the schmodown. The it's not retired in life. Will never die. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Matt Nost, and welcome into another week of Topic Thunder. This is a show that we do for our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. They send in. Whatever they'd like us to talk about, and uh, we don't know what it is beforehand, but we answer as we go. And, John, I believe it's your turn to start this time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Let's start with Nicholas Baldwin. He, said, uh, he says, hey, guys, figured I might as well provide you with a lot of ammo in wild shot. I don't know what that means. While I'm thinking about it, for our next, for our next getting closer question, for what in your life do you feel the most grateful? Stay safe and send the best to Catherine and Lady Outlaw. All right. For what in your life, Matt knows, do you feel the most grateful? Well, I, I think he answered it by yeah, saying did, hello right? to my better half. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, she, she would just fooled your movie? fucking plan, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we answered that quick. That's true. All right, we'll jump to the next one then. Yeah, yeah man, no, suck it. Uh, it's <laughs> that, that's a no brainer. That's easy. And the best part is, Catherine's been listening to the topic thunders lately. Oh, not. Nah. <laughs> and uh, last week, I was talking about hooking up at uh, Christmas parties. She wasn't yeah. happy about that. Oh, but you said you said she doesn't listen to this. I'm not gonna. Get I didn't think trouble. she did. <laughs> and then, like two weeks ago, she's like, "Yeah, you know, I've been listening on my commute, uh, uh, drive home and stuff every once and again." And I was like, "Oh, okay." Um, <laughs> well, I, you know, I just told her that we're just gonna get even more in depth with women we've hooked up with in the past. <laughs> So you got any stories? Anything like really crass and vulgar? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Maybe one day we should ever come in and, and guest on the show. That would be hilarious. Ever answering? Oh, uh, she would questions. hate. It. She would hate it. <laughs> because she doesn't. I mean, she likes movies. Yeah. But yeah. then uh, it's uh. Did did we see that? Yeah. You don't remember <laughs> when we went to the movie and then this happened? Oh yeah, that did happen. Did we like that movie? I liked that movie. You did not. Uh. It's amazing. We both picked partners who, like, if, on your side of things, she doesn't even remember if she's gone to the movies. On my side of things, she hates movies. She only goes occasionally, rarely, to any movie at all. So it's just so funny. We, yeah. We're such slavish devote. We have such slavish devotion to films, you and I. It's hilarious. Yeah. We and well, in, so I'll show her, like, all the, the trailers of Oscar movies that I'm <laughs> interested in. I want to see. And she'd be like, okay, I, I want to see like six of those. And then never wants to sit down and watch them with. Yes. So oh it keeps pushing when I need to watch these. Uh, Dude, I've got to cram in. Although this year's not as, as bad. Right. Uh, years past. She's like, here are the eight films that I'm definitely seeing in the theater. Yeah. Watch the trailers and let me know which ones you want to see with me. Yeah. And it's, it's usually like seven of them. Like, yeah, I would see that. And then it's never like, I don't feel like going to a movie and be like, come on, come on. We got to go at some point. <laughs> uh, For me, she makes me reach out to the publicists of certain sh documentaries to get the screening links. And so I do, I emailed them and I say, Hey, I'm interested, blah, blah, blah. And these are ones that are up for like uh consideration for uh, best documentary. Yeah. And then we get them and then I'm like, okay, when do you want to watch it? Oh yeah. Yeah. When do you want to? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not really. Uh, all right. And then three yeah. weeks later, you're like, what the, what the hell? Like we had sea of shadows. I had Sea of Shadows for so long that it went on Hulu by the time we actually watched it. It was so insane. And I just made her watch The Rescue after she, two weeks later, after she had made me you ever, reach out to Nat Geo to get a link, man. Yeah. You ever get the, oh, you watched that? Like they're disappointed. And oh, like, yeah. I waited. I, I waited for so long. And eventually oh, yeah. it's like, I have to watch these. Yeah. yeah. A, because I want to. And B, it's just like, well, I, I need to have an opinion on them. Yeah, I can't wait uh, till you're in the mood to watch the movie. Yeah, no, there's a, there's a time limit at some point. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and certain things I just tell her like you won't like that one, and right. she agrees with me. But every once again, she'll see something. She'll be like, "I think I would," and I'm like, "I am almost ninety nine point nine percent sure you're not gonna <laughs> like that movie. It is nothing that you like in movies. I don't know." And then we'll watch it and be like, "Yeah, I didn't like that." Like, I fucking know. <laughs> I know what you like and don't like in movies. Uh, it's yeah. pretty simple. 
I think she's starting to take advantage, Lily the Outlaws, of my like advancing years because she'll claim that I said I didn't want to watch a show or a, or something like that, and she'll watch ahead, and I'll come out and I'm like, wait, I wanted to watch that, and then she's like, no, you didn't. You said you watched the trailer, and and then I'm I put the trailer on while she's in the room. I go, I absolutely said I wanted to watch that, and then this like. Mm-hmm. shit eating grin comes across her face and she's like i just oh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I guess i forgot and i'm like oh you yeah you yeah, yeah anything anything television wise with the british cast i yes. assume she's watched oh. it without me yeah. just <laughs> i'll ask is that any good just i don't ask if you've seen it, it just ask straight up is that any good because she's watched damn near all of them their time limits are much shorter than ours are for their for them to watch the movies that they claim they want to watch. Their time frame when it comes mm-hmm. to the British shows is much much shorter than ours. Man. Oh, Dang. I don't even. Yeah, I get the opportunity. Oh, I watched that. Uh, started that this morning. Oh, is that any good? And she got like three episodes in. Be like, Dad, yeah, now I'm out. Be like, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my favorite thing is to go through the Britbox app or the Acorn app and then see all the British shows that she has tried out because it shows you like. Yeah. Oh, the red the red bar is like 20 minutes into the second episode. You're like, what happened here? Ah, I gave up. It's not good. And I'm like, ah, okay. I guess we're taking that one off the list. So yeah. Ugh. Anyway, I feel like Nicholas got his uh, money's worth out of that, even though he didn't intend to. Let's 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 go to the next question. But we are thankful. Yes, thank you, Nicholas. Um, all well, right. The uh away. next one comes from uh, Reagan Lovig. Oh, yes. And says, Hi guys. Uh Movies, sports, and general life are go-to topics that you guys discuss often, which is mm-hmm. rad. Don't stop. But I'm curious about your interest in books. Uh, what books are you currently reading and which that you've read are some of your faves? Ooh. So what are you uh, oh. currently reading? Wow, that's a good question. Right now, I'm just powering through some of the Star Wars books because... Um, thanks to Laura Kelly, she has hooked me up with the distributor of some of these books and they send them to me for free to read ahead of time. So part of the deal is for me, I've got to read them. I mean, if I'm going to get them, I've got to read them. So I've been powering through the Thrawn ascendancy stuff and a little bit of the high Republic stuff, kind of going back and forth between them both. Okay. But before that, um, I was reading this, uh, Theodore Roosevelt book that I found in one of those like mom and pop stores that you stumble across that has like a discounted section. Yeah, it's called Mornings on Horseback, and it's all about his younger times there on uh, in in early years of being um, the president or being a representative, sorry, not the president, representative in Congress and what he was going through in the transition times and then how he would kind of um, use riding the horse and all the kind of exercise his mind and exercise his thoughts and where he'd figure out policy and stuff like that. So it's a fascinating little book about the early years of his life um as a uh, as a politician so i just find uh, i find just about anything uh, about theodore roosevelt ultimately very satisfying what are you what are you reading um let's see the fall of the roman empire <laughs> um fuck you fuck you snobby shit what do you mean you're reading the fall of the roman what, what else war and peace what else are you reading Here. jesus shakespeare what else are you reading the fall of the Roman Empire is what I'm fucking reading. <laughs> Look at that thing. How big is that thing? How many pages is that? Oh, my God. It's... Uh, For those of you who are listening. Well, with many... appendices and whatnot. Yeah. If you if you cut it down to the actual, it's not that long. Uh, 480, 500 pages. Oh, okay. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not the full... <laughs> not the full, full. Multi-volume. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh... <laughs> Let's see uh bloodlands which is basically about uh, the european countries in between the rising powers before they actually they go off in world war ii oh wow that's interesting uh guns germs and steel <sighs> what is that? um that's a good one i've actually i own a second copy of that if you want it guns germs and steel what is it about? basically like the uh, it's a discussion about what certain things like shaped our modern world oh interesting okay um yeah Yeah. there's a uh i gave away or donated almost all my books so i don't really have many books anymore why is that you just were still space it's it's i had like boxes upon boxes of books Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then the last when we moved in together yeah um we unpacked them and then basically just kind of used them as an art piece in an area and it was kind of pointless yeah, after a while. 
Yeah, they just collect dust, and as many as I would give away, it didn't matter because I was adding more yeah. than I was giving away. Yeah. So it just got to the point where uh, I try and just get them from the library as much as possible instead of buying the books because then I just hold on to the book, and then now I've got no – nobody will take a book. Right, 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 right. And it sucks because I'd rather have it. And then if, you know, if I want to like take my time as I read it, as opposed mm. to the deadline of a library card. Yeah. Uh, it's nicer, but oh, well, what are you going to do? Right. That's life. Um, yeah, that is that is life. I'd rather that than just accumulating more and more and more books. I've got the Tiger Woods one coming um, okay. for Christmas. I want to read the, was it Adam, Adam Tim Argorian, the writer there? Don't know. Based off the... Um, the documentary that they did on HBO, they used his book as the basis for that documentary. So I want to read it and see what more there is in it. Um, and I'm also uh, finishing up this one here, which is uh, about the wire, the inside story of the wire. All the pieces matter. Sure. Lindley got me this one last year for my birthday and I'm finally getting around to it by Jonathan Abrams. And it's a quick read, man. Cause if you're into the show, you're just like powering through the page. Yeah. You already know the characters. So exactly. You don't have to... Yeah. So try and remember, oh, who is this again? And <laughs> why, how does that tie in? It's like, no, nah, that's, you know. Yeah. But I, I should create space to read more historical stuff. I'm actually jealous you read. I'm envious rather, not jealous. Envious that you're reading that because I, I, I remember I'm loving to read history books. But like with everything I got going on, I got to carve out time to sit down and read. So I should make yeah. an effort to read these kinds of historical stuff because I'm into it. So that's, that's great that you're reading The Fall of the Roman Empire. 500 pages. My God. Oh, that's probably an abridged version. Plus, yeah, the best part. The best part is <clears throat> it start basically. It's a, it it's a discussion of all the factors that may have led, but nobody oh, knows why the Roman Empire oh, fell. So the book is predicated upon a false narrative, and it knows that just like any of those books are. You're just trying to point to the likeliest suspects as right. to why the Roman Empire fell, but it's not like there was one specific cl cataclysmic event. It was more than right. likely just a build up of a bunch of things that were kind of withering away and then an asteroid eroding yeah exactly there is no <laughs> extinction level event that leads to the romans decline what did you say the best part was i cut you off sorry about that you said the best part what's the best part of the book oh well i don't think uh well i'm just saying the best part is that well uh, there is no best part it oh, was okay. leading up to basically a general discussion of what that was but oh gotcha gotcha gotcha, gotcha. uh yeah, so uh, look, you're more than welcome to to borrow it. I don't know when <laughs> I'll see you next, but actually, borrow you can have it. Hey, oh, no, I'm sure I've got a library right here. I have yet to go to the library. It's literally two minutes away from the house. They just finally reopened it. What do you think about the dude? Let's let's make a segue into this whole thing with um. But well, actually, no. Let's save that for Omicron the segue. Yeah, Is that let's. Much say, Let's save it for the main show. Let's save it for the main show. Let's let's keep this to the questions that are coming above. Sorry about that. Um, all right, where are we off to? Oh, what some of your faves? What are some of your favorite books? He asked that too. We should answer that to finish the question out. What are some of your favorite books? Do you have books that you like were like life changing or like one that you remember ones that you remember fondly? Um, there's a cool. I mean, the, the life changing books. I don't know if I or, have a specific life changing. book book do you okay. like i well no, i carried I mean, a love of reading favorites. for a long time how about your favorites then i'm just trying to i was trying to frame it and to give multiple possibilities i uh, yeah i think that that list is um incredibly long like i can ah. give you give me a second to think about it and i give you a list of like this is a really good book and this is a good book and right right um you know i brought up in the past devil in the white city is right uh, really interesting the disappearing right. spoon Ooh, um interesting is fantastic Okay. Uh, it's about the periodic table and how we got the elements on the periodic table. And then interesting. Uh, it, it's just, it gives you a nice science between Then They have another one, uh, the same author, um, something violin. And it's okay. a discussion of genetics and how that can lead to uh, character traits and mm. how some people are geniuses at certain things. Right. Um, I didn't like that one as much as I like disappearing spoon. Uh, four fish about uh, the most common fish that we eat mm. and the the practices by which we harvest them yeah uh, whether it's wild caught or farmed uh 1491 a discussion of what this country was before columbus arrived wow um okay. yeah i could i could keep going there's, there's so many good books out there there's a great choices yeah 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 for me it always goes back to the alienist that's still my number one favorite book ever by caleb carr 
I still occasionally go back and read it for sure. Um, the uh, Theodore Rex books uh, from Edmund Morris, the trilogy that he did about Roosevelt. That's one of my favorite mm -hmm. reads that I've uh, ever done. Steve Morris is trying to convince me off the cinephiles to start the Lyndon Johnson one. Or he's mentioned it. Yeah. It's kind of convincing me to to watch start that one. But those are like massive yeah. tropes, man. They're huge books to read, and they're meticulously researched. And everyone is afraid that this guy is going to die because he's old before he finishes. I think the last of these books. So on Johnson, so just very interesting stuff. I, I love digging into politics, man. That's really the thing that kind of drives me, or some kind of like um, mystery or anything like that. I dig I dig those kinds of books for sure. But um, yeah, I haven't yeah. read as many. I like uh, I read a biography on Truman. Oh, right. Was it the um, it was just David called... McCullough one? Was it the David McCullough one that's just called Truman? <sighs> I Jason think profile? so. I, I know oh. I've read some other McCulloughs. Like the one about yeah. the Brooklyn Bridge is oh. actually pretty fascinating. That is a damn good book, dude. It I is. remember reading that. Yeah. And uh, what was the other one? 1776. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, there's a great Benjamin Franklin one from Walter Isaacson that I think people should read. Okay. It's a great read. And there's a Tom and there's an Einstein one too from him as well that I thought was I haven't finished. I got I started it like three years ago. We got 150 pages in, but I was enjoying it. I just hadn't found my time to come back to it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, all right. So let's move on to our next one. What do we say? Uh, Tim Williams. Is that correct? Yep. All right. Tim Williams here. Holy shit snacks. He says, uh, good day, blokes. Hope you're well. Let's do another director movie casting. This time, Steven Spielberg. Uh, isn't Steven with a V? Oh, well, Tim. Also, this time with the cast, you can pick them at any age. For example, picking Julia Roberts can be early 90s Julia. The rules are pick one actor or actress from each group, take in turns in picking, and this time pick the genre from the genre group. So... And also throw in one character actor of your choice, dead or alive. Here are the genres. Fantasy, sci-fi, thriller, and crime. Here are the groups. Liam Neeson, group one, Liam Neeson, Harrison Ford, Dustin Hoffman. Group two, Julia Roberts, Amy Adams, Meryl Streep. Group three, Sam Neill, Robin Williams, Richard Dreyfus. Group four, Whoopi Goldberg, Laura Dern, Julianne Moore. Group five, Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise. Okay. All right. So what do we do here? Pick them. Um, so I think we have to we we oh. oscillate so one person okay. gets first pick it's a snake draft oh i see i see i see from and each then, group yeah and then we got to okay. pick a genre and okay. then basically maybe pitch what movie we want to okay. do in that genre i don't Sounds i don't know good. that last part but okay um go, go ahead out. all right so group one i'll go first yeah. i guess we have liam neeson harrison ford and dustin hoffman and we're talking about four a Spielbago film. Uh huh. So it really comes down to two people for me in that one. Okay. I think, wow. And then we go fantasy, sci fi, thriller, crime film. <laughs> well, it depends. Of those two people, You've one got, has. I, I think you have but, to pick the genre first and then pick. So, what is your film going to be? Well, that's the last thing listed in this email. So you don't think we're picking that last? Well, don't you think you pick the actors? I think the, the genre. That's what I'm trying to think. figure out in my head. But I don't yeah. want to tip my hand to you oh, what I'm picking, depending I on see. what you All choose right. later on. Fair so enough. So then there's also the flexibility of, well, can I make my group fit? Yeah. So I am gonna choose Liam Neeson. Ooh, strong choice to start off with. I'm actually going to surprise you and take Dustin. That the problem with Harrison is within Spielberg. It's just like, well, if it's not sci fantasy sci-fi, yeah, thriller and crime, he hasn't really done, and it's not action that takes out like the indie kind of vibe. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's done throws with what with uh, frantic and maybe presumed innocent, but not real, real thrillers, right? I mean, they're they're pretty terrible. The ones he's done, other than because I mean. Yeah. Air Force One is an action adventure film, but like Firewall, that's a thriller, and that's those are terrible most of the time. So what yeah. did I pick? I pick first down group two, or how does it or do yeah. you pick first? You got group oh, two. Okay, okay. So snake draft it. Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm taking Amy Adams. I have to put okay. butts in seats. Dustin Hoffman is going to put a lot of butts in seats. Got to yeah, that was, that was my number one choice because I think she gives you most flexibility in this group. Exactly, exactly. But the other two to choose from, for those listening, Julia Roberts and Meryl Streep. I'm yes. taking Meryl Streep. Okay, interesting. All right. Uh, but you also pick any age of these actors or actresses. Right, 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 right. Ooh, uh, yeah. Even with that being said, I'll take Meryl Streep. Okay, okay. So then you go first now, right, for group three? Yeah, group three okay. is Sam Neill, Robin Williams, and Richard Dreyfus. So I've got Liam Neeson and Meryl Streep so far. Mm. Boy, this is a weird grouping. Yeah. Um, it's a nice challenge. It is a nice challenge. So far, you, I have Liam Neeson, Meryl Streep. You have Dustin Hoffman and Amy Adams. That's correct. So I could do a little gamesmanship and take the person that might fit your duo wow. better. Wow, you've been playing. Uh, you've been playing that uh, uh, song show of yours a little too long. Oh, like crazy. you don't know the name, you condescending prick! <laughs> what is you've it? Been Turn the beat around. Times. What's the name of it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, oh, follow the Roman Empire. Excuse me, Professor Nost. Uh, Pick one sorry. of these. It's all right. <laughs> I realize you're doing 57 shows on your channel, Mercenary Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the best I could do. Hey, man, it was good. <laughs> um, so, all right. I've got Liam Neeson. I got Meryl yeah. Streep. If we go thriller, we go crime, we go fantasy. I am going to take Robin Williams. Okay. Nice choice. Yeah, I'll take Sam Neill. That works. Okay, I was gonna me. say if you take Dreyfus, now you got two grumpy old white guys. Yeah, exactly. I can't, but I can get him at any time. So I could get like nerdy Dreyfus from the seventies and yeah, Jaws. It's still grumpy. It's yeah, it's still grumpy. Yeah. Uh, all right, you got first choice of group. Oh four. yeah, that's right. That's Whoopi right. Goldberg, Laura Dern, Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore. Damn it. Yeah. Also, wow. for a second, Timothy, I'm gonna ask you to work harder. The next time you send one of these to be more diverse, you literally have one black person in the whole crew to choose from and no Latinos. So I'm going to ask you to work a little bit harder here, pal, to have a little more diversity in your choosing next time you put these groups. And I, I would also say the groupings, instead of going male, female, male, female, because it kind of, it oh yeah, go male, male, female, 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 male, male. That way each of us gets a first shot That's true. at a gender That's grouping. That's a fair point. All right, so Julianne Moore is off the board. It is off the board. She is um, off the board. I think Laura Dern gives me the most flexibility as far True. as genre of movie. So I'm going to take Laura Dern. Ah, poor Whoopi. Poor Whoopi, All right. but. All right, so you go first here. Ooh. You son of uh, a bitch. Yeah, it's no brainer. Hanks. Yeah, I know you're taking Hanks. It's no brainer. All right, I'll take Cruise, I guess. Yeah. With Cruise, you're making a Cruise movie. Now I get to start. I get to pick the yep. genre, though, right now. Well, no, and now we can throw in. One, oh, character oh, one character actor, actor. Oh, of your right. choice, dead or alive. Dead or alive. Wow. Ooh. Hold on. I gotta look this up. Yeah, this so we gotta nice find a list of character actors, but if we're willing to stretch the bounds of character actor, I have one off the top of my head. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think yeah. I'd go uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Nice choice. It's a nice choice. It's it is yes, he is a lead, but he, he's basically a leading character actor. Right, right. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Benicio del Toro. Not a lead necessarily. True, he's a character actor. I'm going to uh, throw some Latino, throw some color in here. God damn it, Timothy. Hmm. All right, so now you have choice of genre. Hmm. Oh, uh, to totally going crime. Not even a question crime film okay absolutely so with my cast of liam neeson meryl streep robin williams laura dern and tom hanks yeah crime makes the most sense with mine as well but i guess i'll go thriller mm, nice with that all right so what is your crime film it is a sequel to collateral with tom okay. cruise's brother with tom cruise's brother it's dave cruise no, I mean Vincent's brother. Sorry, from Collateral. 
Tom Cruise playing his twin brother, playing the twin brother of Vincent who dies in the movie. And he's going for revenge here to find out why he was set up in this situation to die. I love it. You're basically Tarantino. So Vincent has a brother <laughs> in this universe called Vic. Vic Vega. Vic Vega. And he's also pretty cool. He is. He is. His hair is not oh, prematurely white. <laughs> um. Yeah. And he discovers that uh, Julianne Moore is the connective tissue here between everything. Uh, and so he kind of like hijacks her and makes her start telling him the truth about this corporation being run by Dustin Hoffman. Amy Adams is Julianne Moore's daughter. Uh, she's involved in this as well as a lawyer. And Sam Neill uh, is involved as one of these corporate uh, uh, people who are who's finding the money to fund this operation. So he's going to tear this operation down. Um, I feel like you from read this email. Bottom. What? Considering how good this pitch I'm is just, out just of nowhere. Up, I'm just coming up with it. And uh, the Benicio del Toro character could maybe mirror Javier Bardem's character, except that he's in charge. Oh, no, he's a cop. He's the detective. There we go. He's the detective trying to track down Tom Cruise uh, as his uh, as Vincent's twin brother, who's trying to stop all this from happening. And so he's the detective. So mirroring what Ruffalo and Peter Berg did in the first movie. So there you go. That's my, that's my pitch. Go ahead. What's your pitch, Mike? My okay. So I have Thriller, and my cast is Liam Neeson, Meryl Streep, Robin Williams, Laura Dern, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Tom Hanks. It's a good. It's a good cast. It's a good cast. So what I'm gonna do as a thriller is I'm gonna turn Robin Williams into a jigsaw like character. Ooh. And he pits the couples of Liam Neeson and Meryl Streep versus ah. Laura Dern and Tom Hanks wow. into a series of escalating, you know, uh, situations. Yeah, yeah. Where only whoever can serve, you know, basically of the two of them, one yeah. group will survive. Wow. And they have to fight to the finish. And we're definitely going to go have to have to go younger with this uh, back in time because wow. you're not going to believe it as much. Although Liam, as the Taken, that be, could be a good pairing versus yeah. maybe a younger-ish Hanks. I like that idea. Uh, that that's the best I can do off the top of my head. I dig it. I think it's a great situation. It's a good cast to take advantage of it. Yeah, but there needs to be more people so they could be picked off. That way, once you're left with these two, you know, couples. Mm -hmm, You've mm -hmm. been with them the whole time, and then you want you're rooting for all of them. Well, okay, so Robin, wait, so Robin Williams is the puppet master. Who's your character actor? Is Philip Seymour Hoffman, and so I what's completely his forgot point? that yeah. he existed in this. And yeah. so did you, as the audience, because boom, <laughs> Williams pulls his face off, and it was Philip Seymour Hoffman, just like uh, Johnny Depp was Colin Farrell in uh. Fantastic Beasts, <laughs> and we're setting up a sequel. Done. I love it. I love it. Done. Perfection. That Perfection. movie is guaranteed to lose money. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is we couldn't get Michael Mann for mine, so we're going to lose money as well. <laughs> that's because he refuses to do the sequel. Yeah, we also have Spielberg directing. I forgot about that. So oh, that's right. Spielberg directing, right? Oh, it's got to be like a happy film. How? Love what thrillers does he make, you know? Well, Jaws. Jaws, True. But Duel? I'm saying with like with an adult cast because he gave us all you know right. you could choose them from any age, but these are right people that don't necessarily Meryl Streep doesn't go in for a lot of action jaws like movies. No, the River Wild is pretty much as close to action as she gets. Yes. Yeah. Uh which isn't a bad film, it's not a great film. Yeah, and if you take Jurassic Park out of Laura Dern's resume, I'm not sure what else is yeah. akin to that. Mm. Maybe Rogue maybe um uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Last yeah, Jedi? Yeah. yeah, Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Well, she did a one in a million move. It was amazing. Uh, anyway, all right. Well, there you go. That's a good, a good place to end the show here, this episode of Topic Thunder. We appreciate all the patrons sending in their questions, thoughts, and comments. Keep sending them in. Christmas and New Year's are coming up, so I know you guys are distracted uh, with your presents and all that kind of jazz but and uh, celebrating the holidays, but... Don't uh, forget to spare a little bit of time to send Matt and I some interesting questions so that we can uh, answer them on the show or thoughts and comments. So we can answer them on the show. Yeah. Right, Matt. And Tim, it's a great 
uh, yeah. question. We're happy to keep doing this. Yeah. Um, Just a little more diversity, Tim. That's all. Well, I would say within the genre, those aren't necessarily Spielberg's bread and butter genres. Oh, and so pick the genre. Pick the when you pick the director, pick the genres he's he or she is good at. Yeah, yeah. he has Everybody. done some sci-fi, but thriller and crime. It's like that's yeah. not really Spielberg's bag. So now I've got to right. figure out, and because you're using actors Spielberg used for those, but. Yeah, uh, that's also me maybe covering my tracks for coming up with such a dog shit pitch. <laughs> but let's not focus on that. You know, I really ask the next time you do it, just do if if we're going to do snake draft. Yeah. Do the two genders as group one and group two and then flip that way. Each person gets first uh, choice. There you go. On there one of go. the genders. Uh, but that is it. So please uh, thank you to everybody that uh, sent in questions this week and supports us over patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. You can follow the show on Twitter at top 10 show. I'll spell it out. Otherwise on Instagram, and YouTube, it was forward slash the top 10 podcast. And uh, with the number 10, there and you, you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost. And you can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter and on Instagram. All right, y'all take care of yourselves. Be well. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of Topic Thunder.